Hello there, I'm going to introduce you to how to get started with the Win Toolbars Manager. So if you want some cool toolbars on your application, Windows Forms application, you want to definitely go with the Win Toolbars Manager. So what I would recommend is that when you get started building your forms, to let that be the first component that you dump onto the form, and I'll explain why. So first go into your NetAdvantage Windows Forms toolbox and locate the Ultra Toolbars Manager. Right here, Ultra Toolbars Manager. Double click it and get it on the form. So, the reason why I want you to put this on your form as the first component or first visual component is because it's going to basically add a panel container to the form. And then, if you already have a bunch of controls there, it's going to, um, you know, it's not going to work the same as far as ripping and floating actual toolbars around on your form so it'll behave a little differently but try to make it the first component you place here so I'll, use, I'll just select add an ultra panel control ultra panel is an infragistics panel control that has all this rich style ability or you can just add a plain old Microsoft inbox panel control so I'll just choose ultra panel just in case if I ever wanted to style it like provide a gradient or backgrounds, colors or whatever I want it's part of the Infragistics appearance object. I'll have that power. So click OK, and now see the panels added, and then the toolbar is added there too as well. So the cool thing about how Infragistics designs the developer experience of this control is the ability to do this in the designer. So I'll click on the Ultra Toolbars Manager, and this will show a couple of prompts directly in the window. So I want to add a new toolbar, and let's give it a key. I like to use capitals for keys. This is the main toolbar. And what kind of toolbar do you want? Well, you have standard, task pane, or main menu bar. Main menu bar is one of these guys where you have, like in Visual Studio, see this up here? That's a main menu bar, and it behaves a certain way. Then you have regular toolbars like this up here, like this one down below. So let's call it main menu bar, and then dot to the top. So, and then you could put tools in here. Now I'm going to add another toolbar and call this um, commands. And it's a standard toolbar docked towards the top. And now let's start inserting tools. So we could do this all through here. Insert new tool. And look at all the different types of buttons you could add. You could add a button, combo box, control container. Control container is essentially a dummy tool that allows you to hook up any control you want. So imagine some fancy controls that you could hook up to it. So when you click it, it shows that. And a font list of all the fonts on your system, plain old label, mask editor, color picker. Uh, a pop-up control container where different than a control container control container will actually render your control within the area of a button or of a menu item however pop-up control container will kind of fly out your control and then it'll pop back in pop-up gallery so pop-up menu there's, there's a lot of different types progress bar state button state button is like when you're doing text editing and it's like the justification buttons like justified left, middle, and right, where it's mutually exclusive state buttons or independent state buttons like bold, like the fonts, like font, um, the font type. Like if it's bold, underlined, striker, you could have them all ind independently selectable and and pressed in or out. And then a plain old text box. Let's just stick with. Let's do a pop up menu. So click on that and call this one file. And let's add edit, but I actually want this to be a button. And you could just blast through these like edit and save and then close. So I added a few of those guys. Let me just close this for now. So now I want to get these guys in here. So I'm going to drag this guy here. And I'm going to drag this guy here. And I'm going to drag this guy here. So I want to show you another cool trick. I could right click on, let's say if I right click on close, and I could say begin a new group. And it magically gives me a line there. So if I click on file, see where it says save, then there's a line, then close. That's how you provide that line. You create groupings that way to make give visual cues that it's different than the rest. So that's that you create this main toolbar here. 
you know you could kind of rip it off and float it even if you want and whatever you do at design time is what will be persisted at runtime so it's very convenient then I'm going to insert some tools that's due and just how about a copy cut and paste or something like that copy cut paste undo redo just to add a few of them and you can basically set images for all these you want to basically set some icons so what you can do is on each one of these items that you click and go to the properties window notice that the properties window has this other element selected object if I click on that I can get all the properties of that one selected object so where I can go is to the shared props and I give it a caption which I already set uh, if I want to go to the appearances for when it's in large mode I can give it you know any one of these colors and image so I could set an image here you know if I would actually get my hands on the infragistics icon pack this would be great for that then you just navigate to some icons and set some icons that's how you do it you set the image property there and there's a bunch of other things that you can set there so that's essentially what you can do so let's say if I select the entire menu and go to its properties settings and a bunch of different types so tool display style the most important property here I think because it changes drastically what the tools will look like you can set it for text only always text only in menus image and text image only so let's do text on so that way for now and then we notice I made a mistake here in my capitalization so cut and we need to also go into the caption and set it right as well so cut very simple stuff so far nothing fancy now we're gonna need to write some code to handle the clicking of these so Infragistics also generated a really cool tool for this we right click on Ultra Toolbars Manager and select Generate Tool Click Code. And you can choose C Sharp or VB.net. And I want to select all the commands. That way I can click Select All, then Copy to Clipboard, close it, double click Toolbars Manager component, Control V, and what do we get? Everything. We can actually delete file because that's just, you don't want to fire or execute code with that. And then you just write code in here, just like execute your commands, you know, call your classes that that take in parameters and pass the business logic to another tier or whatever it is that you do to execute your commands. But that's essentially how it works. So let's just run this application and see what it looks like and see how it behaves. So here it is, very simple. And again, you know, if I had a bunch of icons here and I would have like, you know, loaded some icons, you know, I would have made it look pretty. But the idea of this video is to help you get started on how it works. So I can kind of rip these guys off, float them to the side, dock them, and you know, do whatever I want. This is the main menu. You know, I have the drop down in here. So a lot of things you could do with the ma with the uh, toolbars manager. So I could bring this guy back here. Let me show you some other stuff that you can do. So again, this is just a getting started video. So I'm going to click on this guy here. I'm going to add a new toolbar. Now what type of toolbar? Let's take a look at the task pane toolbar. Task pane was something that came out in like Microsoft Office several years ago and I want to dock this guy to the right hand side of the screen. And let's call it, ah, uh, well, that's fine. Let's give it a key of tasks. And the way this works is insert a new tool and we'll call this home and then let's see what else we'll do I don't know chart uh, I can't think of the name right now so chart and that's good for now so now we have the way this works is that you have this element that could be ripped off and floated around and we have a couple of items in there so if I click on this here, this drop down, we have the home item and the chart item or tool. 
and when I right click on one of these guys I need to associate a control with it so the tools that you add in here must be associated with various controls so this could be a little bit strange once I show it to you but how about we first drag a gauge and again you know it doesn't really matter I'm just gonna throw some various controls here to just show you some stuff here so let's just grab a preset real quick to make it look cool so it's loading all the 101 presets that are professionally designed by the awesome guys here the user experience team and the uh, graphics graphics design team really remarkable how about we grab this one right here let's go fancy so we get that one right there that's good apply and close okay now that I've gotten this guy here on the form what you do is let's click on home or actually click on the drop down go to chart and then right click on it set the control to ultra gauge one and now we need it. We need to host or need to provide another control for the task pane. So how about we go and grab another control? It doesn't really matter what we throw here. How about we just grab a chart and we'll set some data on there just so it doesn't look terrible because it'll give an a, um, it'll give a, an exception message. So we'll just give some sample data. Okay, now that we have the chart on the form, we click on the drop down again, locate home, right click on it, set the control to ultra chart. Notice how as I set a control to one of these tools, it vanishes. So now I see ultra chart selected, but because the gauge has been hooked up to chart, it's not visible. I should have hooked up vice versa, but it doesn't matter, you get the hint. And if we run it again, let's take a look. Notice how the task pane has the chart associated with home. If I move to the other one, go to chart, now the chart is in that one. So home, chart, and now once I move around a few times, you can have like 20 items in here if you like. Once you start creating some movement, these arrows become enabled because it's like a history of the items that you visited. So that's how that one works. You could rip it off and float it around. Let's say if I bring it over here. So it's kind of cool little addition to your UI and some interaction that you can use here. You could dock it top, left, right, bottom, and little Visual Studio exception. So that's basically how you can work with this. So now let's say if you had a grid on the form and you wanted to, let's say if you wanted to do some saving and stuff you could you know execute code to save you know exit edit mode resolve the changes to your back end and so forth so this is basically the toolbars manager and that was a quick intro on how to set up and get some you know productivity out of your application and out of your developer skills to add this functionality to your form so and i haven't even showed you the ribbon yet so the ribbon is another thing that i can go into in another video Infragistics on the web at infragistics.com.